What's up friends, welcome to another video of the MD Journey where my goal is to help you succeed in med school with less stress. In this video, we're gonna talk about my top six tips that I think you need to know to succeed on your clinical rotations. But first, if you're new to this channel and you like what you hear, give a like to the video and consider subscribing and joining the community. But let's get started. <laughs> So how do you do well on your clinical rotations? So for me, my institution actually makes us start clinical rotations during our second semester of our second year. So I've already been through the process for about a year and a half, and I'm going to give you my top six tips that I've used to help me do well on all of them. So tip number one, you have to stop worrying about your grades and instead worry about your progress. Now it's very natural, and I've done it too, for a med student to start a rotation and just mentally ask themselves and their attending and their resident, what do I need to do to get honors on this rotation? Yes, your grades are important, but one thing you're gonna realize really quickly on your third year rotations is that most of your grading is very subjective. You do have shelf exams and you probably have components to your grade that are in your control, but things like your evaluations from your residents and your attendings aren't. So just because you think an attending really likes you or a resident and you got along very well, that may not show on your evaluation the way you thought it would. And many times it just takes students by surprise because they're mentally in this mindset that I need to do X, Y, and Z to get honors. But sometimes X, Y, and Z doesn't equate to honors, unfortunately. So instead, I encourage you to not focus on your grades and instead focus on your progress. Figure out what your strengths and your weaknesses are. You may get along with your patients really well and that's a strength of yours, but you suck when it comes to presenting or you're not the best at writing notes or coming up with a differential or writing a plan or coming up with a plan for a patient. Those are things you can work on. So along with asking your attendings and your residents for feedback on what you can improve on, just mentally ask yourself what you notice are your strengths and weaknesses. On a day-by-day -day basis, you'll find things that you did really well and also things where you just kind of fell short. So once you identify those weaknesses, just kind of make a plan to work on them. If you know your strengths and weaknesses better than your attendings and better than your residents, then you'll be much more hyper-focused on improving yourself versus just waiting for feedback and be surprised of what's on your final evaluation. So tip number two, and for me, this one is really important. You have to be your patient's advocate. And it doesn't matter if your residents or your attendings know how much you care about your patients, but your patient has to know how much you are involved in their care and how much you're there for them if they need something. So one thing that I like to do is a small phrase that I usually insert at the very end of my history or my introduction with a patient, and it goes something along the lines of this. I'll say, Again, my name is Laksh, I'm the medical student on the team. If you need absolutely anything, just let me know. Since I'm the med student, I'll probably have the most time with you. So if there's anything that I can do to provide you better care, then just please let me know. And most of the time when a patient hears that, they'll smile, they'll say thank you, but most of their concerns will probably be taken care of by a good attending and a good resident. But there will be patients that you take care of who simply don't get enough face time with their care providers. And if you just make it known that you're there for them if they need something, they'll be much more vocal for you. And you can actually show off when you can tell your residents and your attendings, hey, this patient mentioned something to me that I think we need to take care of. So that's something really small that you can add into your patient interactions. But just all throughout your day, make sure you're doing everything you can to be your patient's advocate. If you notice your patient said something during rounds, make sure it's being addressed by your residents and your attendings. And if they're not, come up with a plan yourself and make sure that it's being installed. Other things that you can do to be your patient's advocate is making sure you check up on them during the afternoons. Especially during wards, it's very easy for you to round on them in the morning, round on them again with your attending, and then never probably see them again unless there's something big happening. So just make it a routine that if you're on wards before you head out, just check on your patients. I'll make a totally different video on how to strengthen your relationship with your patients. I feel like that's a good strength of mine. Hopefully I can give you some tips in a future video on how to do that. So moving on, tip number three, you have to know your patients better than anyone. And when you first start your clinical rotations, it can be really hard to figure out what you need to know because you're still trying to develop your medical acumen. So what I advise is when you first start off your first few rotations, just get in the habit of knowing one interesting fact about your patients every single day. You know, what do they do for a living? Often we don't ask that to our patients unless we need to know. Um, where do they live? Who do they live with? What do they used to do if they're retired? Uh, back in their career. Those are all interesting things that you can learn about and then share them with the rest of your team who may not also know as well. 
Now as you move on through your clinical rotations, you'll have a much better ability to figure out what's important to know and what hasn't been asked yet of the patient. Just get in a constant habit of being interested in your patient's life because you may discover things your residents you're attending simply didn't have the time to and that can change their whole care. Now tip number four, but first, coffee. But tip number four for real, you have to gather your study material and you have to come up with a plan to study for your shelf exam from day one. So a lot of students make a few mistakes. I'm going to make a whole nother video on this, but I'm just going to touch on some of the big ones. One, they choose too many study resources or they don't know which ones to use. Two, they don't have a study schedule that they have from day one. And so they usually will start studying towards the latter half of the rotation. And number three, they don't start their practice questions early enough. Usually they'll wait until the very end because they think that now they're more comfortable with the material. Maybe their UL grade will look better, who knows. But make sure you're not one of those students. So know what resources you're gonna use for each rotation. If you have any questions on what's recommended, check out the mdjourney.com where I have a blog post for every single rotation that I've done so far. Once you decide on your resource, come up with a legitimate study plan and make sure you're doing questions from the very start. I know it can be a challenge of balancing your study life and your clinical duties. And if you guys are interested, I can make a video on kind of tips on how to do that. So just let me know in the comments below, but just make sure that you're taking the right steps from the first day of your rotation. That way when the shelf exam comes around, you're not stressed. You feel like you understand the material well enough and you're going to do well. So tip number five for your clinical rotations, take care of your body. It's very easy with clinical duties and the hours that come with it to not eat well, to not exercise, to not get enough sleep, but you have to take care of your body. But you're not gonna have as much free time as you did during your first two years, so you're gonna have to get very creative and very strategic on making sure you schedule specific days of the week in advance, knowing that that's the time you're gonna go for a workout or a run, and that's the time that you may cook dinner for the rest of the week. Just have things installed into your weekly plan to make sure that you can't say, I can't take care of myself because I'm a third year medical student. That's not an excuse. You should still be healthy, you should still be sleeping enough, and you should still be getting your exercise. And my final tip, tip number six, always be curious. So one thing that I learned on my clinical rotations is that you can get to the finish line and realize that you didn't take the most of that experience. Simple ways on making sure that regardless if the rotation is a field that you're interested in, making sure that you take the most out of it is just being curious. So if you have a patient with a diagnosis you're not familiar with, make sure you read up on it. If you have a patient who's getting a management plan that you're not familiar with or you're not sure why the resident chose it, make sure you ask them, make sure you ask your attendings. So just get in a habit of asking why and being curious about the answers. You don't have to ask your residents or your attendings, you can just look them up when you come home that night, but just coming up with lists throughout the day or the week of things you wanna look up and learn more about. Doing this, you just take more from your clinical experience and just the material that you have to learn for your shelf exam and your UL questions. So that's it friends, those were the top six tips that I think that you need to know to succeed during your clinical rotations. If you enjoyed the video, then give a like to the video, consider subscribing to the channel, and now I wanna hear from you. What are your favorite tips for your clinical rotations and doing well in them? Also in the comments, let me know if there's a question about doing well in clinical rotations or something particular that you want me to cover in a future video. I already have a list of stuff that I'm gonna cover on a week to week basis, so definitely subscribe to the channel and be on the lookout for those. But if there's something in particular that you want me to talk about, then just comment down below. But thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'll see you in the next one, my friends.